Hey guys, my name is Mark McMahon, and today I want to talk about what the most important thing is in real estate investing, and that is actually finding a deal. Because, you know, without the deal, obviously you've got nothing. You can learn as much as you want to about real estate investing, but without a deal, there's no money to be made, there's no progress to be made. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So if that sounds interesting to you and you want to learn my favorite method, then stay tuned until the end. We'll go over all that. All right, guys, see you inside. All right, so when we, my wife and I got involved in investing about 15 years ago, we were looking for deals and obviously everybody else was at that time too. And this is 2009 when the recession's full blown, but finding the deals was the key, right? Finding them and then actually having the money to buy them if you're gonna flip them or hold them. But for us, in the beginning, it was just wholesaling. So we were looking for deals and we were gonna take those deals to other investors. It doesn't require any money. The deal finding part would seem to be easy, right? You just find a house that needs a bunch of work and put an offer on it and you buy it and that's it. And a lot of, I guess, the gurus out there, that's kind of what they talk about. You know, just go find a house. This is, the, this is probably the hardest part, guys, is, is figuring out how to get those houses and get them under contract and have them make sense financially. So the one method that we use the most still to this day, and that's how we did it all back then, was the MLS. Now, we've done bandit signs and we do direct mailers. We do a lot of phone calls. We do so many different ways to bring leads in and they all work. They all work pretty darn well if you stick with them long enough. But MLS has been the most consistent source of deals for us that we've had since day one. And let me tell you why that is. People always ask me, Mark, why is MLS? Why do you think MLS is the best? You know, everybody else is talking about all these other methods that that you know cost money. Well, that's part of it right there, guys. You're you're spending so much money to try to get leads in the beginning that you get burned out and you go broke and then you decide that investing is stupid and you're never going to do it again and everybody you talk to, uh, you're going to tell them your horrible experience and, and hope that they don't invest. I don't want that to happen. So what I want you guys to do in the beginning, if you're just starting out or even if you're a veteran and you want to learn a different way to find things is start off with things that don't cost money, right? Or very little money. Start off working with a real estate agent that works with real estate investors. Now, every real estate agent's going to say that they know all about investing and make them prove it, make them show you that they've got rental properties or that they've got other investors. They don't necessarily have to have rental properties. It helps, but make sure that they've got experience with other investors, get some referrals. There's nothing worse than wasting your time going out and looking at properties with real estate agents that have no idea how to run numbers. So make sure that they know what they're doing if you're gonna work with a real estate agent. You can do MLS offers, and I'm not talking about right now getting your license. I strongly suggest you do eventually. We make a lot of money with our real estate license. But Redfin and Zillow are a mirror of MLS, guys. You can get the information from there, and that's where most of the people that find deals for us, that's how they do it. They do not have a real estate license. So you can go on Redfin, you can go on Zillow, you can find properties that are already listed. So here is my number one secret, super cool thing about MLS. And not many people know this little known fact. Motivated sellers. Everybody that has a house listed on MLS wants to sell their house. And I know that sounds like I'm stating the obvious, but think about this. You're going to do cold calling. Eventually, you're going to get into cold calling. You're going to get into postcards. You're going to do all kinds of things that cost money because they bring some pretty juicy leads in. But you don't know if whoever you're talking to or whoever you're sending things to actually wants to sell. Whereas on the MLS, every single person that lists their house wants to sell it, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be on there. I know I'm stating the obvious, but that's why I love MLS. I know that every single house that's on there has the intention of being sold, right? I, I don't have to ask, hey, are you interested in selling your house sometime? I already know they are. So that takes off one thing right there, right? At the very beginning, at least I know they want to sell. So now I'm, I'm, I'm at 100% sure that they want to sell. Now I know I can go in and make an offer. Now, whether they accept that offer or not, 
remains to be seen, but I do know that they want to sell. So we've got that one big box checked off in the beginning. How do you craft an offer for them to want to accept it? Well, number one, guys, you're not going to want to go in with a financed offer. You're going to want to go in with a cash offer. And I know you're going to say, Mark, I don't have that much cash. I understand that but you're gonna to wanna to go in with a cash offer anyway. You're gonna to wanna to partner with another investor that has proof of funds. Maybe you have proof of funds. Maybe you have a relative that has proof of funds. What is proof of funds? POF. That is some sort of a statement that shows that your, re your retirement account or your bank account or your stock account has enough money in it to cover the purchase, right? So when I first got started, I paired up with another gentleman who was actually using his mom's retirement account as proof of funds, and it worked. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna work for you, but it worked for us for a couple of years until we had enough money to do it on our own. And now we have enough money in the bank to pretty much show proof of funds for any deal we do. But that took quite a few years to get there. So you're gonna to wanna to find someone or something like that so that you can use that proof of funds. Because when you make an offer, the first thing they're gonna ask especially if they like your offer is, hey, do you have proof of funds? Well, we automatically send that in with our offers now anyway, so that eliminates that question. And that moves our offer up a little bit higher on the pile, right? So a tip right now, whatever that agent wants, give it to them up front. Ask them. When you get on the phone with them and talk to them before you write your offer, because I want you to talk to every agent before you make an offer, always talk to them, get some information from them. What do you want to see in my offer? Proof of funds, uh, obviously a, a, an offer. What else do you want to see? Uh, my corporate documents, whatever it is that they ask for, make sure you provide it for them so that they don't have to ask for it. It shows them that you're on the ball and that you're going to be a closer and that you're serious about this. There's nothing worse as a real estate agent when I ask for backup material from people and they have to scramble to get it. That means like, I, oh God, they're faking it. They're doing something. I don't like it. I'm putting them at the bottom. And when that, and when that stuff comes in, I don't even usually look at it, if it, especially if it takes two or three days. I know then at that point, either A, they're not serious or B, they're playing some sort of shenanigans. So make sure and have that information up front, ask them what they want and make sure and send a what we call a complete package over. Now, if you're gonna be financing the deal, yeah, you're gonna be somewhere in the middle of the stack. You might not be at the bottom, but just remember, if you're doing bank financing, it's not as strong, but you'll still get considered if your offer is good enough. That doesn't necessarily mean though that you're gonna offer more money. You don't wanna, you don't wanna step out of your comfort zone on your offer as far as going too high but you wanna make sure that you have, you have a solid offer and you wanna make sure on those financed offers that you have a pre-qual letter, right? Pre-qualification letter, uh, something from the bank or the lender stating that you are qualified to buy this. Now, not just something that says, so the one thing you wanna avoid there is a lot of people will send a pre-qualification letter that says, based on the information that the buyer has provided, that's you the buyer, they are qualified for this much. That basically means that the lender is saying, look, I don't know if this guy is for real or not. This is what he told me, so I have to assume it's true, and he's qualified for this, if that's the case. But if that's not the case, he's not qualified. So you wanna make sure that you get a DU approval. In other words, you wanna make sure that you're, you've been vetted. They go through and they pull a credit check. And, and they know that, the, that you've got the money for the down payment and that you've got the job and everything lined up so that you'll be able to make those payments and they're comfortable with that. That means it's gone through the first phase of underwriting for the most part that the, the lender said, yes, you are pre-qualified for a loan up to $350,000 and you will be putting 20% down. That is the strongest pre-qual letter you can get. And it's not based on what you said, it's based on the paperwork that you've provided and they've qualified it and sent back you a letter saying that you are ace, you're, you're good to go. That is what you want to include. If your broker, usually a broker, which is what I usually use on bank loans, I'll use a broker, I don't go directly to the, to the source like B of A or Wells Fargo, um, they're too hard to deal with. I go to a loan broker that can shop it around to many different lenders 
and I'm glad to pay him a little extra money to do that. But uh, they're notorious, sorry guys, if you're one of them, but they're not notorious for doing those pre-qualification letters that say based on the information provided by the borrower, they're qualified. So you wanna make sure that you get a hard approval, a DU approval, so that uh, you look much better. And then of course, all the other supporting documents that go along with it. This will put you near to the top. Guys, we've been in a competitive market for the last 15 years, all right? so. Uh, the year right now is 2023. It is uh, May of 2023. Inventory is super low. There's a lot of buyers for every house. When we got into the game, it was nothing but foreclosures. Lots of competition, though. We had to be right on point in order to get our offers considered. So you've got to do the same thing. Make sure that you have everything lined up. And if they ask a question, you have the answer for it. Make sure you do that, guys. All right. In the end, what's going to happen is they're going to pick, and here's, here's, here's why I wanted you to wait till the end. The, the seller or the selling agent is going to pick whoever's offer has the best chance of closing. I'll repeat that. The seller's agent is going to pick the deal or offer that has the most, most bestest, <laughs> the best chance of closing. That is their job, right? So they might not necessarily pick the highest offer. They're going to pick the offer that is enough money, but also it's a qualified buyer, someone that either has A, the cash to close it, and they've proved it with their proof of funds and whatever else they're asking for, or a buyer who has pre-qualified with a hard approval from a lender that seems to have the ability to close that deal. And they're gonna ask you questions about closing that deal if they're gonna pick you, right? So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have answers to those questions. They're gonna ask things like, okay, so are you making offers on other properties? Is this the only property you're looking for right now? Do you have multiple offers out right now? How serious are you about this? Do you plan on moving in? You know, blah, blah, blah. They're gonna ask a lot of questions about you as a buyer to make sure that they don't get into a lengthy escrow and find out at the end that, hey, either A, you're not, you're not qualified, or B, you weren't really serious to begin with. Because that happens a lot, especially with new investors. They'll start putting their toes in the water, you know, and you know, they're making offers, but you know, they don't know what to do if it gets accepted, and so they back out. So you wanna make sure that you're solid, you sound solid, and you're confident. You can't always pull out. There's no problem with that, as long as you haven't signed off on your contingencies yet. And we'll talk about contingencies in another video. It's very important. But make sure that you are very, very certain about the deal before you go that far. It's not fair to the agent or the seller that uh, you drag them down the road and then cancel because you got cold feet. All right, guys, so circle back around. MLS, the most qualified sellers that you'll ever find, right? Because everybody wants to sell that's on there. Work with an agent. If you've got an agent writing the offer for you, work with an agent that knows investment properties. That's A. Uh, and the other thing is make sure that if you're going to get a loan, you're pre-qualified. If you're going to pay cash, make sure and have proof of funds. Make sure you have your articles of incorporation if you're buying an, an LLC or an S-Corp. I suggest, depending on what you do, there's two, two separate ways to buy houses with corporations, and one of them is for flipping, and one of them is for buy and hold. We'll cover that in another video. It's another whole thing. But make sure everything's lined up, guys. Make sure it's lined up so they don't have to come back. The least amount of work for an agent is the best amount of work for an agent. They don't wanna put extra effort in to find out what you want, what you have, what you need if you're qualified. They'll just move on to the next person. Now, when the market cools off a little bit, it won't be like that so much. They're gonna be just happy to get an offer and they'll work with pretty much anybody. But right now, for the foreseeable future, because of interest rates being so high right now, it's going to be a competitive market. I don't care what happens with the economy, it's still gonna be competitive. So make sure you've got all that stuff lined up. All right, guys? Thanks for being here, we really appreciate it. And uh, if you can do us a favor, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and sign up for notifications so that you'll know whenever we drop a video, we drop one every week, sometimes two, and talk full of information so that you guys can make better choices and make more money with your real estate investing. Hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you next time.